What led me to get an initial procedure was there was something about my appearance that I didn't care for. It occupied my thoughts a lot of the time. I wanted to not dwell on it and move on and worry about other things in life that you know, merited more attention. You know, I'm a very visual person. I had a very concrete sense of how I wanted to look. So it was a process of a lot of research and moving carefully from one procedure to the next, because I think it's easy to get excited about plastic surgery. It's easy to get excited about the prospect of changing your appearance. The reason that I chose Dr. Epley, despite the fact that there are surgeons available in my area, and certainly I'm closer to California and Beverly Hills and all the surgeons there than I am to Indianapolis, is really depth of experience. I wanted a surgeon who does this day in, day out, knows all the intricacies of the procedure, both from the technical aspect, but then also has the artistic sense. One of the most challenging parts of this procedure is you're looking at a rendering and thinking about how that's going to look once you've applied muscle and tissue overlaid on top of it. And so there's a huge depth of experience that it takes to be able to look at that and tell a patient, based on your stated goals, this is how it's going to end up looking. One of the most common non-surgical questions I get asked, and I hear it almost every day, is why are you here in Indiana? And so really my answer to that is you got to remember that the address doesn't make the surgeon. Just because you're in some glorious address doesn't actually mean you're a great surgeon or even that technically proficient. And so in my case, the surgeon makes the address, and patients will, in today's world, travel to where they think the best surgeon is. When it comes to wind surgery, his is actually one of the most challenging types of surgeries that I do, even in the world of custom facial implants, and I'll tell you why. Wynn already looks exceedingly good. There is no margin for error. Everything has to be perfect. Not only must these designs be perfect, but in putting them in the exact spot they are designed to be. So there just isn't any room for error, and close enough in a patient like Wynn isn't going to be good enough. You know, we never like to rush in the OR. There's no reason to do that. It's going to take us around four hours, and that's the target we've set. But when I'm in surgery, I'm really not paying any attention to the clock. I'm paying attention to what is my task at hand and to do the best that I possibly can do. In a, a jawline replacement, which I've done lots of them, you're going to see some very expected things. Sometimes a little bone overgrowth, sometimes other surgeons use different types of screws. But in going in and looking at this patient's implant, the screws they use were long and stripped, almost 10 or 12 millimeters into the bone. There's tremendous amount of bone overgrowth on the jaw angles, which in and of itself I've seen many times, and you can remove that bone. Getting these screws out was going to take a lot of drilling and really kind of generalized destruction. And if you look at this patient, how pretty good he looked before, when I look at the risk of trying to get this whole thing out and the potential adverse effects of that, for the benefit to be perceived, I didn't feel that was a good risk-benefit ratio. And I made the judgment that we're not going to try to replace it because I thought we would probably have them end up in a worse place, particularly with implants. You always do the most sterile part of the procedure first. So if you're doing cheek implants, going through the lower eyelid, that's the most sterile part. And that part went exceptionally well. That's going to be a really good result, giving him a moderate but high cheekbone look, which is exactly what he wanted, as well as filling in a little more volume under the eyes. That went great. And it'll still be a good complement to the existing jawline implant that he has.